This video is brought to you by Squarespace. After years of exclusively using FDM or filament-based 3D printers, I finally took the plunge and tried out resin 3D printing for the first time. And in this video, I'm going to share what it was like, my conclusions about it, and whether or not you too should consider getting a resin 3D printer. Let's dive in. So going into this experience, I have to say that I was pessimistic. I've heard a lot of horror stories about resin printers and resin, and my Patreons and members of my Discord channel didn't exactly sell it. Nonetheless, when Anycubic reached out to express their interest in sponsoring some future videos, I told them that I only accept sponsors whose products I have tested and vetted. And that meant that I would need to get over my fears and give resin a chance. Because I'm an absolute beginner, and because I know many of you will be as well, Anycubic and I agreed that I would test out their brand new Anycubic Photon 2, which is marketed as being the best option for beginners without a lot of fancy bells and whistles. Anycubic also was kind enough to send over their new Wash and Cure Plus, and my friend Yuda over at 3 dbot X provided me with some eSun PLA-like resin for testing. To be clear, no money changed hands here, but I was given all of these products free in exchange for a video, and Anycubic is interested in sponsoring future videos, which is a conflict of interest. So you guys shouldn't take this as an unbiased product review, but rather me just sharing my experiences with resin 3D printing as a whole. With that said, I will try to be as objective as possible and point out any things about the product that I don't like, as Anycubic has not had any creative control over this video, and they won't see it before you guys do. In any case, because this video is more about the experience of trying resin for the first time, I thought that it might be really fun to change up the format just a little bit and do more of a vlog or reaction style video. So please do let me know in the comments below if you like or dislike this style for future videos. So here we go. Today, we're gonna try out some resin printing. So I've got my respirator, my ear protection, cause you know, why not? And I, I got a gas mask on tap. Hey, should we set up the printers? This is gonna get messy. I've already taken the liberty of unboxing this wash and cure gloves. We got our paper towels, window open. All right, let's open this thing. is much smaller than the washing cure, which is a relief because I don't have a lot of space here. For freedom to make cool beans. That's our build plate. Wow, it's amazing to me how small the build plates are in resin. I could fit like 20 of those on my Voron. Uh, but this isn't the biggest resin printer ever, so. Now they did give me some gloves here. They gave me tools some kind of white and they gave me these masks and a scraper but uh, I feel like this mask is not gonna do anything I'm going to read the manual this time I'm really curious how informative it's gonna be about actual resin printing versus just this printer I'm reading the manual do you all see we have the cover the print platform the z-axis this is really hard for me by the way actually reading the instructions this is a 4k display which is cool for first use, please follow the instruction to finish the preparation, including leveling. Power is on. Peel the vinyl. System, tools, move Z. 10, one, two. Ooh, I like that sound. It's homing. So it seems to just be one lead screw. Clean the LCD screen with the toolkit. And this apparently is the Photon Mono 2. Wiki, 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 wiki. Yeah. We're supposed to make sure there are no bubbles, which is what this is for. I don't see any way that this is not gonna cause problems. Or maybe the screen doesn't go all the way to the edge when you turn it on. No, it would have to, because the build plate is as big as the screen. All right, loosen the four screws. Push the platform onto the platform carrier. Set the home position. Z equals zero. Ah, press, press platform gently. Tighten the screws. 
thing about instructions is you have to read them in order. Otherwise, they work a lot less well. Please tear off protective film before using. That was really satisfying. All right, gang, it's time to gear up. We're not messing around. I was born in the darkness. Oh, it's orange. Do you love orange? All right. I'm so freaking excited. Let's put in this USB. Put this thingy on. Yeah. Now we just wait four and a quarter hours. Well, poop. I just came back after about three and a half hours and there is nothing uh, sticking to the build plate. So I think our first print was a failure. Now I need to open this thing up and figure out why. I'm not really sure what the deal is. It's our first resin 3D print. Kinda. I don't know what mistakes, but they were made. So we're just gonna try again and hope we get different results. Well, that's attempt number two, and um, there's still nothing sticking to the build plate. And it's taken me like an hour to clean up the bottle of resin, uh, which I put out in the sun to cure all the resin and the tools. So I think we're gonna have to come back to this tomorrow because I really am not looking forward to emptying out that vat again and getting the object off of it. All right, we're back for attempt number three. Maybe the bed wasn't leveled enough. I've lowered the bed even more. Guess we're gonna find out. Good morning, friends. It looks like we have a successful print, so I'm really happy about that. But uh, I don't have a power cable for the wash and cure, so we need to find that. It, it turns out, I looked online, it's 33 volts, which I have no idea where I'm gonna get one of those, and I don't think it was in the box, but maybe it was. Uh, I need to check around here and see if maybe I threw it aside and lost it. So we're gonna get to washing and curing uh, as soon as we can find a power cable. Okay. It's been a few weeks since last recording because it turns out that Customs lost the power cable when they unplugged this thing. So I've had to put this entire setup in the closet there, which now stinks to high hell of resin, but that's okay. And I think we are ready now to take this first model that looks like it came out perfectly and we'll put it in the wash and cure station and we'll see uh, what we come up with. Let's do it. I think we probably need to read the directions for this. Look, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I lost the instructions, but I read the instructions for a similar model and I think roughly I know what we need to do here, so we're gonna try and figure it out together. Take this out and have a look at our model here. Stinky, stinky resin. Wow, it looks really, really good. I don't see, ah, hey, that's pretty smart. That's kind of neat. The only thing is then I'm gonna have to fill this thing up with a ton of IPA and I don't wanna waste all my IPA. So I think I'm just gonna crack this model off. Oh wow, that's actually not hard. Maybe because it sat for a month, I expected this to be way harder. And then let's just plop that in there. Here's 30 bucks worth of IPA. This thing is really strongly magnetized. That was like easily 15 bucks worth of IPA. There goes that. Now, I have no idea what this is for. Oh, it's to reflect the light. I gotta admit, I'm actually pretty excited right now. This is a totally different experience uh, to FDM. And the fact that like, there's a post-process kind of builds the anticipation. There it is. All right, great. Now let's wash. Is it doing something? Yeah, yeah, it's spinning. 
Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm a little nervous that it's gonna like destroy my model because it's really giving it a good thrashing in there. But I mean, that's cool. All right, we're all clean and now uh, it's time to cure. Oh, the IPA stinks. It's, um, it's quite firm, uh, more than I kind of would have expected. I like that I can reuse the IPA, because I guess if I didn't have a wash and cure, I wouldn't be able to do that. Let's put our model here. What do you guys say we cure this thing? I will say, this definitely feels more science-y. Like, I feel like a, a mad scientist right now, uh, which I don't get with FDM. Like, I have no idea how long I should cure it, but I don't know, three minutes. Go, baby, go. Oh, it's very quiet. And I'm surprised at how little light I see coming out. Maybe because this thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, and there's a safety protection. I wouldn't think the UV is bad for your eyes, but apparently it is. Man, that's cool. The color seems to be changing of my model. This resin stuff is actually really dope. I'm not going to lie. All right, it's done. I can now handle it uh, with my bare hands. Wow. Have a look. Oh man, this is crazy to me. These little wings, the fact that it can do that is insane to me. The detail, I know this isn't even the like highest resolution by any means on the market, but the detail is insane. It's actually really strong too. What do you guys say we print some more stuff? All right, so I just got off the line with my buddy at Printed Obsession, who gave me a crash course in number one, resin safety, which is super important. Uh, and number two, just what I need to do to slice my own files and all that. So I think we are ready to uh, print our first sliced file. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. And I'll let you guys know how it goes. As you can see, resin 3D printing makes it possible to create incredibly polished prints that you could easily sell as finished products. And whether you're selling prints or just making a portfolio website, make sure to check out this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace makes it so easy to build a beautiful website without any technical knowledge whatsoever, and they handle all of the annoying stuff like security and hosting and software updates and all that. To build your own website and support this channel in the process, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash the next layer to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, let's summarize the experience. Going into this, I kind of expected resin 3D printing to be hard, like hard as in a hassle. And in some ways it was. The fact that I need to deal with gloves, ventilation, respirators, and treating the resin like it's radioactive is a big hassle. At the same time, the machine itself is so incredibly simple, both mechanically with just one moving part on the entire thing, and in terms of the interface, which to be honest, I found to be really lacking compared to some of the newer FDM 3D printers and their touchscreens. But in the end, this simplicity, at least the mechanical simplicity, means that I don't have the hassle of maintenance and troubleshooting like I do with any FDM 3D printer. So the question kind of becomes, what kind of hassle do you want? The hassle of dealing with resin and all the cleanup, or the hassle of diagnosing and maintaining mechanical issues in the long run? As far as the learning curve, I think I expected it all to be harder. Granted, I had some help from different folks in the 3D printing community, but I would say that all in all, there is much less to learn here than I had to do for FDM 3D printing. There are a hundred different reasons your FDM prints can suck, but with resin, there are really only a handful. Like the machines themselves, everything is just a lot simpler. Supports, hollow it out, drainage holes, that's pretty much it. 
Compare that to FDM, where you need to learn the different particularities of each filament, and every printer behaves differently, and there are speeds and supports and infill and all different kinds of temperature issues, and you get the idea. Now, I'm sure I could go deeper into angles and exposure times and curing settings and all of that, and I could probably go even deeper with a paid professional slicer like Lychee or Chichubox, but at least so far with these beginner products, there really hasn't been any need to. I will also admit that there was something genuinely fun about resin 3D printing in the same way that doing a little science experiment in the kitchen is really fun as a kid. Maybe it's because of the gear or maybe because you are actually using applied chemistry, but resin 3D printing feels less like an engineering maker activity than FDM printing, and it feels more like a science project. And maybe it's just beginner's novelty, but that was really a lot of fun for me. On the other hand, one of the things that I love about 3D printing is that it's something I can share with my friends or young kids as long as I keep them away from the hot and moving parts. And as a dad, it really bothered me that I felt the need to only play with this setup while my kids were far away. I could see my son getting really into this resin stuff as he gets more into movies and cartoon characters, but I honestly can't see myself in good conscience exposing him to this uncured resin unless I maybe find a good respirator with kids' sizes. Now, as I was writing this video, I did realize that Anycubic does sell two air purifiers that are battery powered and they scrub the fumes from the air inside. And I definitely wanna get my hands on some of those or maybe 3D print the Bento box or the Nevermore for this printer because the fumes, at least for the Esun PLA type resin that I was using are really noxious and they permeate the entire room that you're using the printer in. Plus, like I said, a lot of the other 3D printing industry folks that I spoke to told me horror stories about people getting really, really sick due to prolonged resin exposure. Okay, so with all that said, what do I think about resin 3D printing? And will I be doing any more of it? And should you get into it? Well, I think from the outset, I'm less likely to be a big, perfect, ideal fan of resin 3D printing because one, I don't care for tabletop games or any of that type of thing. In fact, I barely ever print even busts. Two, I really do prefer functional prints such as novel solutions for storage, organization, and so on. Three, I like large 3D prints, which isn't possible with most resin printers. And four, I'm really lazy when it comes to cleaning up and all that different stuff. But with all that said, I'm honestly blown away by what you can do with even an entry-level resin printer. Even though this is the entry level that Anycubic has to offer, the first thing my wife said to me when I showed her some of my prints was, how could I possibly know that something like this is 3D printed even if I bought it in the store? And I had to honestly answer her, I really don't think you could. Yes, dealing with the resin is a pain in the butt compared to filament, but that is compensated for by the simplicity of the machine and the incredible detail. Not to mention, resin 3D printers are really affordable these days. This brand new Anycubic Mono 2 they sent me is 220 bucks, and you can get it with the fancy wash and cure station for $461. For some reason, I thought SLA printers were much more expensive, but that is comparable or even favorable to even the most affordable FFF printers on the market right now. So as an FDM enthusiast, do I recommend taking the plunge excuse the awful pun, and trying out resin for yourself. Well, overall, if you're looking for a new challenge, adding new capabilities to your maker repertoire, such as clear models or insane details or mixing your own colors, then I can see how resin 3D printing has some serious draws. And if you're into something like tabletop games or miniatures, then resin is going to be much more up your alley than FDM. For what you're going to spend on it, it's just unbelievable what you'll be able to make with a resin 3D printer. With all that said, if you're going to head down this path, I think you really should take some time and consider whether or not you have a well-ventilated and isolated space to play around with the resin, and if you have enough patience to properly handle and clean up after it. As I always say, and sometimes practice, safety first. And if you're the kind of person who can't be bothered to gear up and scrub down every single time that you use this thing, then it's better not to own one at all. All right, Jonathan, get to the point, all the safety precautions out of the way. What about me? Am I going to be actually using this thing now that I have it and I've done the video? Definitely. 
though I don't think it will ever be as useful to me personally for the kinds of things that I like to print as my FDM printers. I'm actually really excited to be able to make cool figurines and toys for my kids that simply would look lousy on even my best FDM 3D printers. And considering I generally get bored with hobbies as soon as I run out of things to learn, I'm genuinely grateful that this opens up a whole new world of learning and possibilities that are now available to me in 3D printing because I have this setup. But keep in mind, I did just rent a full studio where I plan to completely isolate all of my resin 3D printers and lasers and pair them with air filtration and ventilation. And I'll be honest and say that if I didn't have a separate space away from my family, like a basement or a loft, or even a well-enclosed shed, and if I was dependent on just this small office, I really don't think I could justify keeping a resin 3D printer around. So there you have it, my first experience with resin 3D printing. I'd love to know in the comments below, do you plan to try out resin 3D printing or are you gonna steer clear? And I'd also really appreciate it if you guys let me know, would you like to see more resin related content on the channel in the future or not really? Your feedback is super helpful and it ensures that I'm spending my time producing content that you guys actually wanna watch. Speaking of appreciation and being super helpful, I do wanna give a special thanks to Matthew over at Anycubic for sending over these awesome products for review. I really enjoyed playing with them. And an even specialer thanks to my Patreon supporters who enabled me to play around and make stuff for a living, which I'm super grateful for. Finally, thanks to all of you for watching, liking, and subscribing. You know, we recently hit 40,000 subscribers, and when we hit 50,000, our friends over at Polymaker have agreed to give away 50 rolls of filament to 50 random subscribers. So all you need to do is be subscribed to the channel when we hit 50K to win. All right, that's all for this week, but I'll see all of you on the next layer.